Hey everybody, I'm going to do a quick update here on my Black Ghost Knife Fish Tank. Uh, if you're a regular viewer and you follow along, you'll know that I just posted a video a little while ago where I came down and this tank had been blacked out and I lost my Black Ghost Knife Fish. So I wasn't quite sure what was going on at the time, but I've had a little bit of time to suss it out and I'm pretty sure there was an oxygen deprivation issue going on. Not 100% sure why that is. I've got pretty good circulation in this tank. It probably could be better, but the circulation alone should allow for a fair amount of gas exchange at the surface. Now, I will say, prior to me putting this air stone in here, the surface did have a fair layer of that biofilm on there, and that biofilm does prevent, uh, or at least reduce, the gas exchange when you've got, you know, that the whole surface is covered in that sort of scummy film. Another thing I changed uh, not too long ago, if you can see into the back, you see how there's like one little area of the spray bar creating a little bit of surface agitation. I used to have the spray bar rolled in such a fashion so that one little section of holes was actually spraying down the back glass and all the other holes were spraying up towards the surface and that gave me a lot more um, surface agitation uh, and I'm not sure, I know I did it for a reason, I can't remember what the reason was now, but I rolled that bar around so that it was the other way around. Most of the water was being sprayed down the back glass, and only that one little section was hitting the surface. So I hadn't really even thought about that before I blacked the tank out, so that is another, you know, that, that's my bad. I, I definitely should have considered um, what was going to happen when I turn the lights out because plants do produce oxygen while they're photosynthesizing. While you got the lights on, uh, your tank will be very oxygen rich. But when the lights go out, the plants actually use oxygen and it can deplete it from the tank. So you've always got to have good uh, vigorous circulation. Most people recommend an air stone. I personally don't like them. Uh, I've never found a need for them unless I'm doing something specific. And I've just I've only started blacking tanks out over the last month or so. I don't have a lot of experience doing this. I've always fought algae in other ways. So now that I'm blacking this tank out, you know, I've lost a couple fish. I'm beginning to realize that if I'm going to do this, I really need to put an air stone in the tank when I do it. So that's a valuable lesson. You know, it was a costly lesson, but that's usually the way it goes in the fish world. You, you know, that's the, the most expensive lessons are the ones that get driven home. So hopefully my lessons can help somebody else you know if you're going to do a blackout in your tank to try to fight algae i definitely recommend it it seems to be a pretty effective method uh, on some types of algae which i'll get to in a moment but if you're going to do that you know if you are going to black your tank out put an air stone in you know better safe than sorry if you don't have an air stone in there already put an air stone in and that will alleviate any guessing as to whether or not you're going to have a good vigorous gas exchange i've also got to say the filter must be really clogged look how weak the stream of water coming out of there is it's already starting to break up and not pump properly so it's possible that the uh, intake is actually also clogged up and it's not drawing very much water up into it and if that is the case then that would also account for less gas exchange you know the the, the circulation is where you're going to get that um, gas exchange and if you're not at the surface is where you're going to get the gas exchange. So as the water uh, circulates and, you know, the, the lower water comes up to the surface, it dumps all of its CO2, it picks up fresh oxygen, goes back down, and that's the way it works. So with this really, really poor flow rate I've got going on in there, it was really reducing the circulation in this tank too. So that must have had something to do with it. And the reason I'm certain that it was the oxygen is as I was taking the cover off, I noticed... Uh, four or five times in a row, the, the Corydoras in here were darting up to the surface and then dashing back down. They do that habitually. It's just part of their behavior normally, but they don't do it terribly frequently. And these were just going back and forth up to the surface like they were just ferrying oxygen to themselves, you know. And so that was my first clue. And then once I got the cover fully off and was able to look in there, all of these little schooling fish were all swimming around right at the surface with their mouths at the surface. So that's a key indication that 
something's going wrong. It's probably low oxygen, but there could be other issues that is preventing your fish from getting oxygen, and they'll behave the same way. If, if you put ammonia in a tank and there's gill damage, uh, they'll still behave the same way because they're not getting enough oxygen in their blood, so they naturally just go to the surface to try to get more oxygen. In this case, it was because there was a low level of oxygen in the tank, and that's, I'm sure, what killed the fish. So I will also say I did find one dead red miner tetra or serpe tetra depending on uh, where you buy them what you want to call them and i looked and i looked and i looked and i finally found my crenocicla it has moved into where the black ghost knife fish used to live and i know it's kind of hard to see but right in there is where my little crenocicla is if you can see that movement in there that's my little dwarf pike cichlid so that's what i was really worried about as bummed as I am about the black ghost knife fish dying, you know, in all honesty, if I didn't tell anybody about it and I just kept telling you, oh, trust me, it's in there, <laughs> nothing really would have changed because we never saw that fish. So it's a bummer. I've had it for many years. I liked it in a weird sort of way, but I very, very seldom saw it. So I think I'll probably get over that, you know, emotionally pretty quickly. Uh, I was going to be pretty upset if my little crenocicla in there died because that's a really cool fish that I like a lot. So that was it. That was the uh, sum total of my casualties. I lost my black ghost knife fish. I lost one serpe tetra. And I lost none of the algae, which was the other point of this video. It just kind of bums me out. I've gotten in here and, you know, pulled on it. It's, it's not even like it's dead or dying or it's, it's lost its structure or anything. It's just as thick and green and healthy as the day I blacked out the tank. Now, I will also say that I blacked out the tank Wednesday night, and it is Saturday morning, so it hasn't even been a three full day period, but after what just happened, that's fine, I'm done. I'm not blacking this tank out anymore. But, I mean, you can see how just stringy and slimy this stuff is. It's really, really gross. It's pretty, like I said, when it's in the water, but when it's not in the water, it's just this slimy green hair stuff. And I am dropping that on a plastic mat, not my carpet. So there you go. There's my update. We're going to do a water change just to get any funky water that might have been in here out. And I'm going to work on trying to get some more natural solutions going on to get that hair algae out of here. Um, I have a panda molly in my angelfish tank down here that I've been talking about moving for a while and I've never known where to move it. It's a female and I don't want to put it in a tank with a male so this tank might actually be a good tank for that one to go in. Uh, I also might put some guppies in here and if I can get down to the good fish store and I can afford it I'm going to try to get some Siamese algae eaters. I've had some more issues with my truck than I'm even going to get into talking about but I'm really strapped for money right now so I don't know if buying more fish is necessarily an option for me at this point. I got to get my truck up and running so I can get back to work uh, before I worry about buying more fish. But that is an option. I am considering the um, Siamese algae eaters for this tank. They eat just about every kind of algae I've ever seen so far. And so I guess that's going to be my next best option. So I will leave you with a little look at this. This had me concerned this morning too. Um, when I pulled the blanket back to check on my garami tank to make sure everybody's alive in here because this tank is also blacked out this was wet and when I started looking around look at that that's really wet and what I finally figured out was well I say that as it took me a long time and it only took me a minute um, this cloth got curled under the lid and was down in the water all the way down to about here so that was, it was just wicking water out of the tank right into this blanket. And as the blanket got wet, it wept down and dripped right off the low point, which was right dead center of where this big wet spot is. So that's where we got all that water. And, you know, I'm looking underneath, I'm looking for a leak, I'm checking the glass. And it really, it all turned out, it was just that little piece of cloth was tucked in there and it was just wicking the water out of it. And I didn't even lose enough water to get below the black bar there so no biggie uh, that does raise the humidity in this room quite a bit I mean I basically got all of this surface area that's just evaporating water into the room now so that's basically a humidifier and now I'm gonna have to go run my dehumidifier in the other room so I'm sort of fighting against myself but you know on that note it's not like I'm not 
evaporating a lot of water into the room on a regular basis anyway. The amount of water that comes off of the surface of these leaves alone uh, it far exceeds what we just looked at there on my garami tank. So I kind of forgot I'm in the middle of water change. I'm just standing here rambling. It's been a stupid weird morning. And that was just supposed to be a little update on my Black Ghost Knife Fish tank over there. So I'm going to get back to finishing up this water change. Say thanks again for watching. And I will leave you with the last look here at my waterfall tank. So thanks again, and I'll see you real soon in the next one.